Okay, this week's going to be a little bit different. Uh, usually we try to show how to do something on a beginner level. This week we're going to go look at synthesis, samples, sound fonts. What the heck's going on with that stuff? Uh, where does it come from? How's it tie together? I'm going to try to do it in English, and I hope that a few minutes spent here will put a really good foundation for understanding further explorations you might have. So let's get started. <laughs> Okay, we're going to go through this really fast, uh, top-level view, so if you have any questions, uh, you know how to contact me. First, take a look at the sine wave. Take a listen. Not very musical. Uh, now check out at the bottom the dobro note. And it's musical. The sine wave is too simple. We don't hear that well. Early on, they noticed that that dobro note, if you look, you see lots and lots of little bumps on the on the main parts of the wave. And they noticed that they could take two oscillators and make an approximation of that sound. So the first oscillator would go at the basic frequency. This is electronically. And then they'd have another oscillator and it would go at, say, twice the frequency and half the volume or amplitude, and it put like one of those little bumps on the thing, and that sounded better. And then they could add a third oscillator that was, again, twice as fast, half the volume, half the amplitude, add it on, and it sounded better. And adding those things all together, they, they call that additive synthesis. And in 1900, a guy named Thaddeus Cahill uh, invented a machine called the Telharmonium, uh, the, did just that. It, it stacked up oscillators and uh, tried to make music. Uh, it was, wasn't was commercially viable. The, the Mark II that he came out with around the same time, uh, 1900, weighed 200 tons. So that, that wasn't, oh, wasn't something you'd take to the gig. In the 30s, they came up with a Hammond organ, and it was the same concept. But this whole thing of having to add oscillators, add oscillators, add oscillators, uh, just really made additive synthesis a problem. So they came up with another plan. Uh, if you look at the square wave. Yeah. Uh, and a sawtooth. Really, really unmusical, but you could, but they found that they could take these waves and they could run them through filters and filter out certain frequencies in them, put in cutoffs and, and things like that. And that was called subtractive synthesis. And they could again approximate, uh, the, the sound of a, a real music instrument, uh, using subtractive synthesis. You might remember two weeks ago, uh, we played with Zen, Zen add sub FX. And that is exactly what Zen does, except in a computer. And that's kind of brought this all back up and, and revitalized the whole synthesizer concept is now you don't need all those oscillators done in hardware. In the computer, we can have additive and subtractive synthesis. And it's kind of fostered a little new interest in additive synthesis. So that's what a synthesizer does. It either, if it's additive synthesis, it stacks on waves and, and adds them together to try to make a more complex wave shape that's more attractive to your ear. If it's subtractive synthesis, it's one of those really ugly sounds that, that is uh, filtered, low pass filters, uh, comb filters. You know, they'll, they'll change the envelope, but one way or the other, they're taking things away from it. And that's called subtractive synthesis. Now, at its most basic, that single dobro note is what we call a sample. It is a real digital recording of, of an actual audio event. And this, these sound font things, as it turns out, are something that's kind of between the two. What they do is they take a tiny, tiny bit of a, of a real sample, and they stack that together. They might subtract things from it. They might add some together, and they make instruments uh, in a bank of instruments by taking a sample and then doing the various synthesizer techniques to it. And and that's what this whole thing is about. We've got synthesizers on the one end that uh, algorithmically imitate electronic hardware and create uh, wave shapes that we hear. On the far other end, we've got 
recordings of, of actual instruments uh, we call samples. And then in the middle, we've got sound fonts uh, that take samples and mess with them synthetically. So let's go and let's take a look at Swami, which is a uh, sound font editor. And, and we'll take a look at how they actually build up sound fonts from uh, samples and make instruments. Okay, well, this is Swami. Uh, here you can see I've got a couple sound fonts. I'm not going to show you how to hook them up this time. We'll do that some other day. Uh, today, I just kind of want to show you the structure of how this works. So here's a couple sound fonts, and I'm going to open this one. And you'll see I have melodic presets, and don't worry too much about percussion presets, instruments, and samples. And if I look at these melodic presets, I've got things that look like instruments. Uh, well, okay, and you can see it sounds kind of like a piano. Uh, notice these things right here. They might look a little familiar to you from the hydrogen thing, how the layers work, and that's something else we'll do another day. But uh, let's pick something else. Uh, a shakuhachi. <laughs> So you see, these are instruments. Now, what I want to show you is, down here, ultimately, are all these things that are called samples. And they're all, for the most part, uh, real audio recordings. So when I, when I come up here, an instrument is made up of one, one or more samples. So if I look at Seashore, uh, it's got three different samples in there for three different layers. Notice those layers we're going through. Uh, and it's similarity. And, and you're going to see this again and again as we go through this digital music, that uh, these synthesizers and these representations, they have uh, different layers. And, and again, we'll talk about that some other time. But just note that one or more samples makes an instrument, and one or more instruments makes a preset. Now, in these cases, they've they've set up different different things, but but it, it's all the same thing. I, I could have multiple samples, uh, different samples that went into making up an instrument, and I could have multiple instruments that go into making up a preset. Uh, as MIDI. Uh, uh, I'm sure you've heard of, allows for 127 uh, presets in a bank, or patches as we call them. Uh, here we'll look at a different one, melodic presets. We should see in bank zero, no more than 127, and we don't have any more than in bank 128. You've got some some uh, drum type things. We'll see if we can. Uh, but I, again, it's the same thing. It's samples. One or more samples makes an instrument. One or more instruments goes to make up a preset. And then uh, with a keyboard like, like this, a soft keyboard, or your computer keyboard, or a MIDI keyboard that you've got hooked to your computer, you can play uh, those melodic presets. You can uh, set your MIDI keyboard to uh, play those roads. And hit a button and change it quickly uh, over to a different preset. And be playing, you know, uh, a guitar. So, so that's pretty much how that works. Uh, like I said, in a week or two, we'll go over uh, how to load this, how to get uh, Swami set up. It's pretty easy. Uh, we'll go over more things in the future, but I just wanted to show you uh, how, how these uh, sound fonts look, that they actually take real uh, samples and combine them together into instruments, combine instruments together into uh, presets. So that's that. Now, this is important. Everything I just told you through this whole thing is wrong. It's just completely riddled with exceptions. We've only done like a 10,000 foot view. Um, so 
and, and, and those exceptions uh, come up more and more in the future. Uh, sound fonts have fallen a little bit out of vogue. Uh, they have a hardcore following of people that still make sound fonts. Uh, but you, you just don't see as much about it as you used to. And as, as computers get better and uh, these things we call samplers, digital samplers that uh, come, in, come in, the lines get blurred. Uh, what a sample used to mean, a completely uh, different thing, as we showed you a recording of a, like a real instrument. Uh, digital samplers now might be samples of synthesizers. So it's, it's blurring those lines. And, and the concepts are all still there, such that these modern samplers will have uh, collections of things. They might not be banks. They might not call them sound fonts. But, but all these concepts are still here. Uh, uh, acoustic sounds, uh, additive synthesis, subtractive synthesis, uh, banks of them collected together into a set of, of instruments or presets, and then you can, can play that. So I hope that this has uh, uh, given you kind of an overview, and we'll, we'll do some more things in the future, uh, specifically with hooking things up and playing with them. But uh, this should sound, this should serve as, the, as kind of an intro to all that. So, so thanks. <laughs> Okay, well, that ends this week. Uh, like always, uh, here's the versions we're using. If what you're seeing uh, isn't what's shown in the video, uh, check that first. Um, here's, here's also the, the websites of the things we've looked at, and I, I urge you to check them out. Uh, Google, uh, Wikipedia, uh, get involved. This is really cool stuff. The community is, is very gracious, very friendly, ask questions. Uh, I know we covered this really, really fast, and there's a lot of stuff involved. I'll leave questions on the YouTube channel or on the Google Plus page or send me an email, whatever. If anything's not clear, uh, we'll try to get you straightened out. And otherwise, uh, I hope that you have a lot of fun, and we'll, we'll see you next time.